Welcome to Noise and Help in a Built Environment. In this CPD, we will discuss the problem with noise and how to address acoustics in the built environment. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about Burr Eco Group. With a Burr, taken from the natural renewable material timber, and an Eco, taken from the deep-rooted passion to be eco-friendly. Burr Eco was established in 2003 as supplier of bespoke timber windows and doors. The motto was to deliver the difference and the aim was to provide sustainable source bespoke timber windows and doors that were designed to last and wouldn't impact the environment. This value driven approach influences everything we do from product development to our supply chain, our environmental campaigns and the way we deal with customers. Sustainably sourced timber windows and doors that are designed to manufacture to the highest standards in quality, performance and security were and remain to this day our core values. We believe in designing healthy, happy homes whilst protecting the natural world. This is an ethos we consider from the very start of the manufacturing process and this begins in the forest. All Barico winds and doors are available FSC 100% certified softwood and hardwood. At Barico, we strongly believe that the only way to a sustainable future for our planet is through the use of timber in construction and production in place of non-renewable materials such as oil used in the production of PVCU. 300 billion tonnes of carbon are stored in our forests across the world. When harvested to make wooden windows and doors, the wood retains a carbon store, making them carbon negative. You can reduce your carbon footprint by 100 kilograms of CO2 for every brick or timber window and door you buy. Our commitment to supplying a sustainable product doesn't stop there. Two years ago, we began working with the World Land Trust, a wildlife charity whose patron is Sir David Attenborough. As part of their Buy an Acre scheme, for every window and door we sell, we are donating one pound to the World Land Trust. Today, we have saved 135 acres of threatened habitat. This donation costs you, the customer, nothing, and is a simple deduction from the margin we make, which we feel is necessary in order to continue to satisfy our wish of making a difference. We offer an extensive range of window and door styles designed to suit all property types from modern new build to bespoke self build and renovation right through to listed and heritage properties and the most architecturally sensitive projects, all backed by an extensive 10 year warranty. If you would like more information on our windows and doors after our presentation today, our company profile and product overview can be found at rebaproductselectors.com. All our product sections and elevations can be found in our resource centre in both DWG and PDF. You will develop an understanding of the effects that noise has on our health, the detail behind the way in which to design out noise. You will gain knowledge of the acoustic performance of glazing units and an understanding of the process of acoustic testing of windows and doors. We will cover how sound reduction is measured and how to calculate the sound reduction that is required to satisfy an acoustic report. So section one, the problem with noise. In this section, we will explore the problem with noise and how this affects health and well-being. In order to discuss this, we must first understand what noise is. Noise is derived from the Latin word nausea, meaning sickness. It is said that the word noise in fact stemmed from unpleasant sounds or complaints made by seasick passengers or sailors. It is no coincidence then to find that noise actually does have the capacity to make us sick. In order to explore this further, we must define the difference between sound and noise. Sound is vibrations that travel through the air or another medium, such as a window, and can be heard when reaching a person's ear. Noise, on the other hand, is a sound. However, it is sound that is especially loud or unpleasant or that causes disturbance. Different sound sources produce vibration or waves at different rates. The rate at which the wave repeats itself is called the frequency. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength is. The wave for low frequency noise, such as that produced by lorries, 
repeats less often than high frequency noise, such as a whistle. The volume of sound, which is measured in decibels or dB, is determined by the height or amplitude of the wave. Different materials will transmit sound of varying frequencies in different ways. Therefore, if you are trying to reduce the amount of sound traveling through something, you need to consider the frequency of the source. Typical sound levels. In modern life, we are subjected to various types of environmental noise on a daily basis and the situation is getting worse. The perceived loudness of sound is measured in decibels, often abbreviated to dB. A dB scale starts at the threshold of audibility with zero dB and even at this level, noise can be perceived by the human ear. The chart shows the common types of noise and the rating at which they take place. Our hearing system is complex. We have the ability to filter out background noise, yet subconsciously, our brain's fight or flight mechanism is prepared in response to noise that might be considered a threat to prepare us for action. At 70 decibels, we have a 30% chance of being awakened by a noise according to World Health Organization. The noise policy statement for England and the World Health Organization state that noise exceeding 35 decibels can unsettle a person's healthy, restorative sleep pattern, which can have a negative impact on a person's health and well-being. 30 decibels and below is a recommended level for restorative process of sleep. Various studies have been conducted to investigate the effect of noise on health. These studies show a clear link between exposure to excessive noise levels and long-term health issues. Governments recognise the impact of this and are increasingly developing policies to reduce noise levels at their source. The government have a long-term vision which is set out in MPSE. They believe by controlling noise levels, society can avoid significant adverse impacts on health and quality of life, and where possible, contribute to improvement of health and quality of life. We have the ability to filter out background noise, yet subconsciously our brain's fight or flight mechanism is prepared in response to noise that might be considered a threat to prepare us for action. This can happen while we sleep without us actually being aware of it. Our 24-hour society threatens this delicately balanced mechanism, particularly at night. If our fight or flight mechanism is repeatedly triggered in vain, it is not good for us. Laboratory studies have shown that the body releases stress hormones such as adrenaline in response to acute noise. This happens in response to high sound levels during the day, but relatively low levels when sleep or relaxation is disturbed. A report carried out by the World Health Organization over a 10 year period concluded that at least 1 million healthy years of life are lost each year in Europe alone due to noise pollution. There was a report titled Burden of Disease from Environmental Noise. It noted that thousands of people in Britain may be dying because of a lack of peace and quiet. In the second World Health Organization report, Night Noise Guidelines for Europe, it was shown that one in five exposed to noise at night could be significant damage to their health. The potential health issues are extremely varied, but include mental illness, stress, headaches, dementia, high blood pressure, stroke, and some heart conditions, both cardiovascular and coronary. Section two, designing out noise. It is important that we consider noise in the built environment if we are to design healthy, happy buildings. In this section, we explore what to consider when designing out noise and how to determine the sound reduction required to build comfortable living spaces. To understand noise, we first need to look at how noise enters a building. Noise will enter a building through the weakest point and the acoustic performance of the whole building will be affected considerably by the weakest part of the building fabric. This can be demonstrated by opening a window slightly when there is noise outside. The noise levels in the room will be substantially higher due to the open window. In order to understand why this is the case, you could consider the acoustic performance of a building as being similar to the ability of a sink with a hole in the bottom to hold water. 
The rest of the sink could be impenetrable to water, but the water will still escape. Strengthening other parts of a sink, such as the walls, would have no impact on the overall ability of it to hold water, as it would still leak out at the bottom. To improve the performance, first you need to deal with the weakest point. Noise and regulations. The building regulation relating to sound is part E, which really relates to walls and preventing sound from travelling from one room to another and from adjoining buildings. Part E is split into two sections, E1 and E2. E1 looks at protection from noise from adjoining buildings, such as flats, terraces or semis, and E2 deals with sound transmission within the home itself. What we want to look at is sound reduction in relation to outside noise, and this is where the windows are a key design element. A noise survey and report may be required at the application stage or once planning permission has been granted if the proposed development will be sensitive to noise and is likely to be affected by existing noise sources, for example a housing development near a busy road, railway or commercial activity. The second one is the proposed development will create noise which may affect nearby noise sensitive properties, for example a new commercial activity near existing residential properties. Government guidelines. All noise reports for residential developments are governed by BS 8233 2014 guidance on sound insulation and noise reduction which represents current government guidelines and compliance. This standard has combined with the World Health Organization and they both recommend the internal noise levels shown here in the chart in decibels. This deals with the control of noise from outside the building. BS8233 is regularly referred to by local authority planning departments in order to assess noise impact upon residential development. The aim of a noise survey is to gain a baseline measurement of the noise environment within the vicinity of your proposed development. Once a noise environment has been defined, the potential noise impact on residential dwellings can be assessed. The level of noise impact is analysed according to British standards and the World Health Organisation guidelines to ensure the future occupants will not be adversely affected by noise. These standards provide guidance on acceptable levels of noise impact on developments, as well as noise thresholds that should be achieved for bedrooms, living rooms and external areas. The desirable daytime noise level for living rooms and bedrooms is 35 decibels. Dining rooms should be designed at no more than 40 decibels and bedrooms at night should be a maximum of 30 decibels. Understanding sound reduction. Now we have an understanding of desirable noise, we will look at calculating sound reduction. The sound reduction provided by glazing may be represented by a number of different indices. The most commonly used in the UK and Ireland is the RW or weighted reduction, which incorporates a correction for the year's varying sensitivity at different frequencies. This is measured in decibels. European standards present the sound reduction as adaptation factors to RW in brackets C or CTR. RW is the weighted sound reduction. C is the adaptation term for medium to high frequency such as radio TVs and CTR is a traffic noise reduction adaptation factor. Where applicable the CTR value must be added to the RW to provide the CTR example. The performance of a 6126 insulated glass unit is written as 33 in brackets minus 1 minus 3 equals R in brackets C comma CTR, where RW equals 33, C equals 32 and CTR equals 30. Let us now look at a few examples. In the table we have an external noise at 67 decibels. In order to satisfy BSA233 we will need to design the bedroom at night to be no more than 30 decibels. If you were to take a 42 decibel window, the internal sound would be 25 decibels 
and in 67 take away 42, which takes this under the desirable level. However, if you are looking at an area which is subject to traffic noise, you need to make a correction for the CTR value, which would in fact take the internal noise level to 30 decibels, which is exactly the recommended level. Take the same example, but in an area of low frequency noise, and you would apply the C correction, which would take the internal noise to 26 decibels, well under the desired level. Noise reducing windows and doors. Let us now explore how noise reduction is achieved via windows and doors and what to look for when specifying external joinery. So, how does acoustic glass work? Well, it works in two ways. By reflecting the noise back towards the source and by absorbing the noise within the glass. As you can see in the example, the glass unit is made up of different thicknesses of glass. Two panes of 4 mil glass with an acoustic interlayer, which work to absorb sound. A 20 mil argon filled gap followed by a 6 mil toughened pane. Glass with varying thicknesses is known to have a much better acoustic performance. It is certainly worth avoiding configurations with matched panels as they share a dipping performance at the same frequencies and so allow sound to pass through more effectively. Glass thickness should be dipping by at least 30% in order to minimise the risk of sympathetic resonances within the unit, i.e. 10 mil plus 6 mil or 4 mil plus 8 mil. Further benefits may be gained from including laminated glass products. Using a combination of laminated glass and different thicknesses of glass reduces vibrations and noise, so less sound travels through the window. The acoustic interlayer between the panes work to absorb sound. Triple glazing has long been promoted for its acoustic performance. However, we speak to Jack Harvey Clark at Apex Acoustics who explains that this is a common misconception. He says that manufacturer's test data for the glass alone shows that the reduction for traffic noise for a similar configuration of double and triple glazed panes is typically similar or can even be lower. With so many discrepancies and false claims in the window industry when selecting an acoustic window, you really want to be looking for a window which has been tested, that's the whole window and not simply the glazing, and ideally a window that has been certified as this will give you assurance of the resulting sound reduction that the chosen window will comply with your acoustic report. Assessing the overall window. Although the glazing is an important factor in the sound reduction, what you want to look at is a true acoustic performance of the window or door. Some manufacturers will simply provide acoustic values for the glass, but whilst the glass is the single most important element of the window, it is vital but all of the windows components are taken into account, including the frame design, seals and even the hardware. Experience has shown that performance characteristics for the whole window can vary dramatically between different window systems, even though they incorporate the same glass specification. To give a true indication of performance, the manufacturer should subject the entire product to an acoustic test under controlled laboratory conditions in order to determine the weighted sound reduction value for the product. Window acoustic testing. In order to determine the acoustic performance of a window, this would generally be put through testing. In this section, we explore the process involved in acoustic testing and the certification process. Testing a window for sound reduction. The performance of noise reducing windows should be determined through laboratory testing. A sample window is built and the sound reduction is measured over a range of frequencies with the result given in decibels. The higher the number, the more sound is reduced. Most window designs on the market would be expected to achieve around 25 decibel RW, weighted sound reduction. Whereas a window that has been designed to reduce noise is likely to achieve around 40 decibels RW. Testing. 
Acoustic testing measures the ability of a building product to reduce the transmission of sound. Where you see the EN code, example BS EN ISO 1040-2, this demonstrates that the product has been tested under laboratory conditions. Step 1. Noise generated on one side of a test sample. Step 2. Noise measured on the other side of the sample to calculate sound reduction. Measurements are made using pink noise, which is a controlled sound very similar to white noise. Noise is generated on one side of a test sample and measured using accurately calibrated microphones so that the level is known. It is then measured on the other side of a sample to calculate the level of sound reduction. Measurements are taken in a range of prescribed positions with background noise and reverberation times being taken into account. The test laboratory is designed to eliminate any background noise that could affect measurements. It consists of two chambers, a source room where noise is generated and a receive room that is used to measure the reduction of noise. The test chambers are completely isolated from the floor, the ceiling and of each other. This stops noise travelling around the test sample so any noise measured on the received side can only have passed through the test specimen. Between the chambers is a wall into which the tested product is installed. The sound reduction rating of this wall is such that the sound will only travel through the test sample. The testing sample will have been delivered to the acoustic testing laboratory. The product is installed in a very specific way in accordance with the British standard. The importance of certification. It is important to specify a window that has been certified as this provides assurance that the chosen window will provide compliance with the acoustic report and that the same reduction shown has been verified by a third party. Blue Sky's noise ratings make it easy to choose noise reducing windows and doors. Only companies that have joined the Blue Sky scheme for acoustic windows and doors can use this label, giving you confidence that products with this rating have been checked by an independent certification company. The Blue Sky label represents a noise dial with A++ being the best possible sound reduction and E being the least. Learning outcomes. As a result of today's presentation, you will gain the following learning outcomes. You will have developed an understanding of the effects of health noise on health. You will be aware of the building regulations relating to noise and when an acoustic report is required. You will have an understanding of how acoustic laser performance in terms of sound reduction. You will be aware of the process of sound reduction testing on windows and doors in accordance with BSEN 1040-2 an overview of how sound reduction is measured. You will be aware of what to consider when specifying noise reducing windows and doors. Thank you for your time.